Hello everyone. Welcome to the new part of link tutorial. In this part we will learn about first and first to default method of the link. Let's start. We are going to learn what is first method, what is first or default method, what is the difference between first and first or default method and then we will create few examples with the help of first and first or default methods. First of all let's understand what are first and first or default methods? First and first or default both are used to return first element from a data source. Whatever data source you have or whatever query you have from that query from that data source if you need to fetch the first record then you can use either first or first or default. Now let's see what is the difference in between first and first or default. If the element is not available at first index, suppose I have a data source and there is no element at the first place. This case may be possible because of the filtration. Suppose we have applied a type of filter and based on that filter there is no data in the data source and still we are trying to fetch the first record. Then the first method will throw an exception and first or default will return the default value of the data source element. What is the meaning of default value of the data source element? It means whatever data source I have, there will be a type of the elements of that data source. Suppose I have a list of integers, then the type of element is integer. Suppose I have a list of string, then the type of the element is string. Suppose I have a list of objects then the type of element is object and in this scenario if we are applying first or default method and there is no data at the first place with the given condition which we have applied in our query then first or default will return the default value of the elements let's see how it work in the demo here i am in my visual studio and i have created a very basic console application in this console application, I have a program class and a main method. Now first of all, let's create a list which will be the data source for our query. First, we have to write the namespace for the collection. Suppose this is the data source and from this data source I need to fetch the first element. Let's see how can we fetch the first element from this data source. Suppose first we are going to work with method syntax. So here is the variable method syntax and then first of all you have to write your data source. Data source is numbers and then you have to write first. Now let's understand what is the definition of this first method. If I go on the first and click F12, you will see I have this first method and inside this first method, there are actually two first methods, okay. This is the overloaded version of this method and that's why we have two methods. So if I talk about this one, in this method, I don't have to pass any parameter. But if I look about this one, then I can pass a predicate which is also a type of func t source boolean. Okay, we will understand what is the meaning of this parameter in the next example. But now for this example, let's focus on this one where we are not passing any parameter inside this first method. So I'm simply using first. Now let's see what is the type of ms. The type of ms, this is the variable actually. The type of this variable is integer. Why integer? This is because of the elements of the data source. The list has elements in the form of integers. That's why the output will be integer. Okay. Now if I put a breakpoint over here and if I press F5, you can see ms is returning 1. Why? Because the role of the first method is to return the first element from the list. It does not change the position of the element. Suppose I am I'm writing here 11 in the first. Okay. Now if I try. 
now i'm getting 11 as the output why because it does not check about anything else it only check about the first record in the data source whatever first record is available this method will return that element and that's it now if you need to apply some filters so there are two ways to filter the data first one is you have to use dot where suppose let me remove this 11 from here and if i apply a condition like this where x is greater than 5 okay now the condition is that i have a list and which has numbers from 1 to 10 and from that list first i am filtering the data okay and after filtering the data i am applying the first method now let me press f5 and let's see what is the output so here you can see i am getting 6 why 6 because this data is filtered and that's why all these parts are removed from the data source inside this query and these are the remaining elements and from these remaining elements we are selecting the first one and the first one is 6 that's why I'm getting 6 here as an output but I can also modify this query in such a way Instead of writing the where method, I can write my condition inside first method. How? Like this. If I press F5 now, you can see still I'm getting the same number. Now if we talk about the performance, let me write it twice. So there are two ways to write your query. You can write your condition inside the where or you can write your condition inside the first so which one is better which one should we use so i recommend you to use this one this one is actually fast as compared to this query why because if we talk about this query now let's break down this query into small segments suppose this is the first segment and what is happening inside this part this is filtering the data based on the condition and the condition is that the number should be greater than 5 so it will filter out the data from the entire data source suppose this data source has 2000 or 2 lakh record and we are applying our condition like this then this query first filter all the data from the data source after filtering all the data then it will select the first element from the data source this is what which is happening in this query now if we talk about this one Inside this, first we have the data source and on that data source, I am applying the first method and inside this first method, I have a condition. Now, what will happen? It will check on the first element, 1, the condition is false. Then it will go to the 2, condition is false. When it will come to this one, the condition will be true and this element will get written. Further, it will not check rest elements. Okay. That's why whenever it will get the first valid element, it will return it from the data source and the execution of the query will be completed. That's why this one is fast as compared to this one. So I always recommend you to try this one. Now there may be some situations. Suppose let me remove now this one. So we will only focus only this type of queries where we are writing our condition inside this first method. And this is actually the second overloaded method of the first. If I press F12, you can see now the selected part is this one because we are passing our condition here in the predicate. Okay. Now suppose I am applying my condition where number should be greater than 10. And you know that we don't have any element which is greater than 10 inside this data source. Still, if I press F5, let's see what will happen. You can see that we got an error and that's how the first method is designed. If no element is available inside the data source, then it will throw an exception. So what should we do? Suppose you have a data source and inside that data source that might possible that the given condition does not match any element and still you need to write that type of query. Then you can always use first or default. If you will apply first or default, then if the data is not available based on the given query, then you will get the default value of the element. 
no let me press f5 and you can see inside the ms1 i'm getting zero why zero because this is the default value of the integer and we do not have any matching elements which is greater than 10 so i'm getting zero now let's try some complex example with this so for that let me create a new class and suppose the name of the class is user and inside this user class let's add few properties and suppose this is the data source which is using the user class and now we have to implement our query on this data source this data source is actually a replica of your table you can apply your link query on your database table also suppose you need to match the password and the username inside this table how can you do that so first of all if i write the method syntax over here users dot Okay, so you have to use link namespace actually so using system dot link so let's use the first method and inside this first method we have to write our condition like this where x dot username equal equal admin and x dot password equal equal admin okay like this this is how i can write my query using the first method if i press f5 you can see i am getting the complete object from this data source where id is 1 password is this and username is this so using this way you can apply your login method but there is a problem inside this method suppose the username and the password which is given by the user does not match the values in the database suppose user has typed something wrong password like this and now if i press f5 you will see that we will get an exception why because this data does not exist in the data source so to avoid this type of condition you can always use first or default method now if i press f5 you can see that i am getting a null value why null because there is no matching data in the data source based on the given condition and if condition is true then i will get the complete object which is available in the data source so using this way you can check your login method if this value is null it means the username and password does not exist in the database if there is a match you will get the complete object and then further you can implement your other features if we have to implement all these things using the mix syntax then let's have a look on the examples of the mix syntax also so you have to write your query like this from you can write where method or you can avoid where method you can directly write your condition inside the first or default or first method so you simply have to select user and just put all the things inside a bracket and at the last just use the first or default method that's it using this technique you can apply the mix syntax for the first or default or first method similarly in the same manner you can write your first method also now if i press f5 and let's test the application so in the mix syntax you can see that i am getting the complete object from the data source let's try it with some other data also suppose if i'm using user b over here and user b is also the password now you can see in the mix syntax i'm getting the complete object of the user b that's how you can use first and first or default method in the link queue i hope you will like this video thank you for watching have a great day